Hey everyone, WolfyCast here back with another tier list video. This one is going to be a basically a revamp of a the tier list I did last week, kind of on release day or the night before release day, where it was just my general expectations of how each character will feel in the clash mode. So this is going to be an updated, revised ver version after one week of exposure to the game and kind of seeing, you know, judging off of my own personal experiences and then watching a lot of people's streams and hearing a lot of people's like general feedback of, of uh, how everyone feels. And the tiers are going to be exactly the same as they are in that video. Uh, so just a quick refresher. S tier is for people that just define the meta entirely. Like when they're on the team, whether they're, whether they're on your team or on the enemy team, you have to revolve like you have to revolve your play style and the way that you approach the game around that person for for better or worse right um and then a tier characters that are good in every in almost every situation they very easily slot into any and all team comps like they will always provide large value based on the role that you're choosing them for uh and they're just always good b is kind of the middle of the road characters who are they're they're pretty good um but they you know there there's some there's a little bit of something that they lack either they are just like a little bit under as far as damage numbers or perhaps uh it's a little harder to slot them into a team but they're still pretty good and they can they can very easily work c tier is kind of the under par tier where you just you just wish you had something a little bit more from them. You know, they, they, they perform well under the right hands and definitely when they are catered to by a specific team comp. But overall, they kind of just unfortunately lack something. Uh, and, and I'm talking I'm I'm talking specifically like in the highest possible tier of play. And this is this is, again, just fully based on my experiences and, and just the overall consensus that I seem to hear from people here and there. Uh, and then the D tier is the unfortunate, just really not good, really not that usable. Um, just no matter what situation that they're in, they just never feel like they're up up to standard. Uh, and you just really shouldn't use them. And uh, obviously at the very top, I'm going to have my goat tier, but we'll get that when we get to that. So starting, I have the uh, I also have the other tier list in front of me just to compare things. We're going to start right off into it. And I, I hope that this won't be as long as that video because there's there's stuff that I don't need to like rehash in those sorts of video in that video, because, uh, well, I'm, I'm assuming that most of you have already watched it. Uh, if not, then you should <laughs> self plug shameless self plug. Uh, but anyway, we're going to start with Ashlyn, as we always do. We'll just go down the list uh, in the order that they're in. Ashlyn, I put at the bottom of B. This time I'm putting her at the top of A. I have no clue what they did to Ashlyn, but she feels incredibly powerful. And not just her range build, like even her melee build is going crazy right now. Like the amount of sustain and just tank and durability that she provides, you know, she's not going to be a she's not going to be like a primary frontliner, obviously, but she very, very easily supports like a, a frontliner, like a Margrave or a Rutger. And, and she she got fixed like the bug fixes of of being able to use your focus or like cater sometimes falling through like it's not perfect like I, i'm still running into situations where i can't focus or cater doesn't go where i want him to but generally for the most part like she feels really really good like i i don't know what they did <laughs> uh beckett i'm gonna put her slightly above ashlyn I do think that Beckett is not as utilized as she used to be just because TMAT exists and TMAT is, I mean, let's be real. TMAT's going to be on probably the top now. Uh, but yeah, Beckett, for the most part, feels exactly the same. She's really, really good. I mean, anything, she's probably moved even higher because of the fact that uh, the poison grenade switch, like now the poison applies a little interrupt on hit and then the second tier dazes. It's really strong. Um, but yeah. Beckett feels about the same. Not really need any more. Um, Charnock, Charnock as well feels really, really strong. Um, and I, I had Charnock in A tier as well uh, from the previous list. And I think he's probably going to stay about the same. Um, maybe a little bit higher than I put him last time, but we'll see when we get there. Yeah, but again, he 
you know, everything I said, just the pure AOE potential that he has. Like, he builds focus super fast. The focus is pretty strong. Like, it's not incredible, but it's it's a good focus. And he's got huge zoning potential. Like, he's really good. Um, I, I have no reason to put him any lower. Uh, Ezrin is going to be our first, like, actual big shift. Um, well, actually, I, I mean, Ashlyn was our big shift. But Ezrin is going to be uh in d tier i actually think ezrin is contention for the worst character in the game now um he just does not feel good and the it's interesting because ezrin actually kind of low-key may or may not be a pub stomper depending on you know depending on the situation but in coordinated play where both teams are communicating on both sides ezrin does not feel good he's so easily countered he doesn't do enough damage whatsoever like his healing build keeps him alive but it's not all that helpful you know if you're gonna if you're gonna use a slot to have someone stay alive um you probably just want to put in a tank and then have sven <laughs> right uh ezrin ezrin's not good ezrin is very unfortunate and same thing with griselma um i'm actually gonna put griselma above ezrin because i think that like i think that even she has some value um because she's really good at She's she's really good at setting up the defensive points. She's really good at going off and being like a solo um, aggressive person for, you know, stopping orb capture. Like if, you know, if the power rotation is coming up and you need to have someone go back and interrupt a creature from capturing, like she's really good at that. But that's really her only niche. Um, she has great damage output if the hands are ignored. But again, coordinated play. Griselma is not really popping off anytime soon uh, in <laughs> in a team composition, in my honest opinion. Uh, again, unless it's like a so like a team a team composition that is solely revolving around making her best potential. But like even then, that's a stretch. Uh, HK, I got to be honest, I might move HK down. Um, I'm gonna put him here for now. Like kind of at the top of B, borderline A. HK does not feel as strong as he used to. Like, I I still think he does really good damage. He's got, like, great zone control with the Kaboom Box upgrade to do make that burning field. Um, obviously, if you land shots with your Railgun, like, you're doing incredible amounts of damage. And he's very easy to slot into teams. But he just feels a little... He feels a little lacking compared to other people. Um... And I don't think there's anything to do with the, the patch notes. I actually just think it's because people have gotten more used to other characters. Like, he's outshined right now. And, and, and I, I'm not even actually seeing that many HKs. Like, I'm not a great HK, but even, even on games where I felt like I was really popping off, I was just kind of not doing as much as the team needed me to. Um, Imani is still S tier. There's really nothing else I can add to everything that I said. Like... On certain maps, even on even on her worst maps, like Imani defines the way that you have to approach the game because she takes the perch, and if you don't have an answer to her, she's gonna carry the game every single time. Like I think almost per like verbatim, I said exactly what I said in the first video when I put Imani on top. Like she, no matter what you do with her, she's gonna be incredibly powerful. It doesn't matter if you go the nerfed combat sniper. Um, it doesn't matter that the weakness got like lowered, the day's duration got lowered. It doesn't matter if you go Kaboom Bolts versus Frost Bolts. Like she is, she's insane. She's insane meta defining character. Uh, Kajir, I really shouldn't put Kajir in S tier, but I kind of have to just because he's ridiculously strong. And it, I and I know it's like I know it's like bug abuse and like he hasn't had a nerf pass yet and he's not fully like functioning but man he is he's incredibly strong like super super busted and you just you have to be fully aware that Kajir is on the enemy team I actually might put him at the top um like if you don't have a way to deal with Kajir if you just forget that he's on the team the he's gonna stomp like he's he's absolutely gonna thrash and he has he has answers like if you if you really jump on him and like fully cc him like he's basically obliterated but man he, you're gonna trade one for one at least almost every time 
especially in the hands of a good Kajir. And he doesn't, that person doesn't even have to be like abusing bugs. Like Kajir is just really good and definitely nif definitely needs nerfs. Um, let's see. Gnosis. Gnosis I put in C and I think he's going to stay in C. Gnosis is just unfortunately, like Gnosis is the def like definition. Um, what's the phrase? He's the he's the poster board child like the poster child of someone who is just not up to par like he he could definitely be better in the right situation but he's gonna be he's gonna be outperformed by everyone in his role and even in his off role of, of assassin like every other assassin in the game is better than him um even taito like even taito is doing pretty well right now which is amazing to me um but yeah, Nas is just so huge, easy to hit. He's got no defenses. Um, like, he can go in and get a crazy combo. Like, if you do the AoE gore and then get your focus off, like, you did a great amount of damage, but you probably have to leave immediately because they're going to start hitting you. And then the bleed that you're doing on your focus is probably going to get cleansed because supports are incredibly strong in the game right now. And they they always have been, but they're like it's more noticeable that good support play is happening and it's insane gnosis just lags behind it is very sad um i mean i honestly might put gnosis in d when it depending on how this goes um margrave margrave i kind of want to keep an a um i might drag him down lower just because i'm starting to really see the full appeal of Rutger. um and I, I don't think that's because of bugs. Like, there are still some weird, janky things with Rutger. Um, but he's really strong. But Margrave is still really good. I, I think Margrave still fit, uh, does exactly what he needs to in every aspect. Um, but he, he doesn't feel quite as insane as he used to. He still has probably one of the best focuses in the game as far as, like, setting up kills and, and getting, you know getting the team to pop off like he's got a really great focus and he definitely holds the line as a tank should but uh i don't know i i see him get little a little bit outshined comparatively but he's still a solid a in my opinion mozu mozu is really strong too but i think i want to move her down to b i think she might be on the top of b but it's just it's really just because I'm not seeing a ton of Mozu play happening. Actually, no, I think I'll keep Mozu kind of where she was because when Mozu is in the game, like I never really see a Mozu do poorly, especially in, in you know, coordinated play. Mozu is near untouchable because her teleport is so freaking annoyingly long cast and she's going to do so much damage all the time. Um, I wish I was a better Mozu because she's really fun to play. <laughs> <laughs> but there always happens to be a Khajiir or a trip on the enemy team and I just can't pop off. But she's she's really solid. I think she's going to stay exactly where she was. Uh, Oru. Man, Oru has really caught me by surprise. Oru is really good. Oru does a lot of damage. I think, unfortunately, I'm still going to put him at the top of B instead of like near mid-bottom C like I did last time. I still think that he is outshined by other characters. Like, I still think that, um, I might put him under HK. No, I think HK is, I think HK is really falling off the deep end. And, and this could just be because I'm, again, not really seeing HK is like in games. Um, but HK sadly just doesn't feel quite as good. But, um, anyway, Oru, like, man, I, I really have underestimated just how much damage he does. It is insane i uh but um i still think that you could very easily slot the role that he wants to play with someone else like charnak and mozu or imani or beckett like he wants to do the same things that all of them do but he he is really good like i i i definitely fully underestimated the power of a good oru like he is very strong so yeah, I'm going to keep him here. I I just I do still think that he's lacking a little something something like he has no escape. His self peel tool is a little bit, you know, weird. It's got that long setup time. You know, it's very easy to work around. But like when you place it right, like, man. Um, and again, just the damage output. Crazy. Paco is also pretty high for me. Paco is. I I mean, I've gotten 
I've been playing a lot of Paco myself very recently. He's incredibly strong. Um, not quite like a full on tank yet still, but like he's really he's really solid. I do think that he falls off like in the late game. Actually, I'm going to put him here. I think he does like fall off in the late game. Like eventually he stops doing quite as much damage. He's not as like bulky to stay in fights like the healing eventually gets a little bit lackluster even if you go like mostly most healing upgrades and again the damage can be done by other people um but like as a as a as kind of like the frontline support role like he's a he is a support like i've seen him fill in that support slot not with healing obviously like with the zone control and and the frontal like the ice like providing movement he's like man paco is paco was really nice when you have a really nice paco he is really setting up everything for the team um but yeah i i, I do think he just kind of falls off in the late game unfortunately but he's still really good uh ramsey where did i put ramsey i put ramsey in b tier i am seeing some really good ramsey play but i think i'm gonna put him around the same place as paco um, which is exactly where I put him last time. I, I've seen Ramsey perform super well. You know, I, I, I can't deny that I've definitely seen like a really strong Ramsey that will almost never die. And he's very good at securing kills. But, uh, I, I do think that, uh, as far as I do for, per, I don't think as far as the combination of frontline and assassin that he is. Um, I would still rather have Margrave. I would still rather have Rutger. I would still rather have Trip or Wu. Um, but yeah, he. I think I still think he's very solid and very easy to put into a team composition if that's what you wanted to do. Uh, Roland, Roland, I put at the top of B, and he's gonna squeak into A. He's probably gonna squeak up into like here. Um, Roland is super strong, guys. Like I, I, I. <laughs> the amount of insane burst that he has if you can aim obviously of course um like i i was i was really underestimating the power of like the slug upgrade on his lmb that changes it into an actual like projectile that you have to aim and and um instead of the blunderbuss like shotgun uh really strong like with the with the I think the I think the second tier two upgrade gives it faster projectile speed and like less fall off distance. It's just man. And uh the the bolas do insane damage. Like no one really goes the trap bola. Everyone tries to aim for the direct impact bolas because it gives you like a reduced cooldown on another bola, and then the stun is really solid. The burn is insane. It's like 120 damage per second. Like the, the burn bola is nuts. And then his focus. God, Mega Blast does so much damage. 800 at rank one with 50 burning per second for like six seconds. That's that's that that's almost what is that? 1100 damage. Yeah, because it would be 500. It'd be 50 times three, which is 300 plus 800 is. Yeah, 1100 damage is a tier one focus with a huge AOE. Like it has a wind up time. It can be interrupted, but like it's got a, a massive AOE with a push effect. Just oh, my God. I, I man, do I do I put him above Beckett? I think I might. I think Roland is really stupid strong uh, and definitely needs some fixes. Wrecker man. I, I put Rucker like down here like he was still in a tier for me, but he is he is so strong. I actually might put Rucker in S. I think if a Rucker is on the enemy team like you need to have an answer. You you need to figure something out because Rucker is near unkillable. He's doing tons of damage. That wall, the wall, man, especially on these two new maps, Picaro Bay and Heavensward. There are so many places that you can put a wall down. And like you're just blocking the enemy from doing anything. You're cutting the team in half or you're just like you're stopping someone from escaping. And, you know, even if you don't go days wall, if you go longer duration wall, like both sides of the wall tree are really good. And then, you know, again, his ability to live forever, his mobility is 
insane. Uh, and the the kind of the ability to to peel and stay together, or, or for him to to peel and stay healthy because he's got like really crazy shield regen, and if he has like a good support with him, God, a Rucker is unstoppable. Sven, yeah, Sven's gonna stay up here. Of course, Sven's gonna stay up here. Sven is like the most meta defining support of all time he just does so much healing he's got ridiculous 2100 health pool um like pretty short cooldowns the best escape in the game for everybody um i i watched a scrim earlier last night uh, uh, as of recording this and like the amount of times that i saw trip not trip i saw sven save someone's life with the jump pad i i like i couldn't count on all fingers and toes and it wasn't even that long of a game like it was just the 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 the, the clutch save that sven provides i just oh man i sven might still be my goat like at the end of the game or at, at end of the video because <laughs> sven was my goat in the other one i i think he might still be up there but there there is a little bit of competition this time uh team at uh man, I've seen some team at really pop off even after nerf. She's going to stay up here. I don't again. I don't think that she's really bringing anything like super new to the table. Um, I think that she does a ton of damage. I think that she does. I think that she's got a really super insanely strong escape tool that still needs to be nerfed. Um. But I don't think that she's super meta defining because she still has like answers and, you know, people are getting a little smarter with using uh, cover to block the homing missiles now that they've been nerfed a little bit. Uh, and, she, you know, again, the, the nerfs across the board with the patch that was released with the game, she's still performing super well. Um, definitely top of the A tier. Like you can put you can put team out on any team composition and she's going to just shine. Uh, trip. S tier yet again. Who's who's shocked? Not me. Um, I I I do think that trip is a little easier to deal with in coordinated play. But again, like the S tier is reserved for people that define the meta, like people that have a their sole purpose in their existence is making the enemy say, "Hey, wait, we have to we have to consider the fact that they have this character." We need to do something about her. Like it shifts your entire perspective on the game, realizing that you need to do that. And like you could argue that Griselma is there too, but Griselma has an easy solution: just kill the hands, and then she can't do anything. Like you know, you, pub stopper character, but still D tier and competitive. Like that's that's how she is. Um, Taito, Taito has shocked me. Um, I'm still going to put Taito in C just because I think every support, uh, not every support, every assassin in the game still does way better than him, um, by, by a country mile. But the, the addition to, um, the, the addition of the interrupt on his focus now, actually pretty solid. Um, and yeah, just the, the amount of mobility that he has. I, I do think that I, I do think that Taito still could use a little bit of buff here and there um, to kind of keep him to, to keep him on the same level as as Trip Wu, Ramsey, uh, Kajir, of course, being stupid strong. Um, but I, I, I do think that he's still really, really good. Or, or uh, I, I do think that he's under tier, but unfortunately, he's he's going to have to stick here. But a good a good Taito can really still shine. Uh, Vadasi. I mean, let's be real. Vadasi's up here with Sven. It, Vadasi is just like, she's ridiculous. She's she's absolutely ridiculous. Um, again, Vadasi just needs you know she needs a little wind up time because she definitely needs upgrades like around level five or six, and then she's set for the rest of the game. Like, it, it, she's she's nuts. You know, and and that might be surprising for some people because I'm sure that there are plenty of people here that probably haven't seen a good Vadasi in their game, um, because you know a, a Vadasi that's still learning the game, she is going to keep spending her health pool, and like Vadasi, of course, has answers, uh, with picking poison talents, but 
if you are if you are forced to pick poison to deal with someone that is healing, uh, she she's a problem, you know, and and it's not like it's not like she still doesn't do what she needs to do, even if the even if her allies are poisoned all the time, like she'll still pull ridiculous healing numbers. She still has the insane survivability. She still can perform like a good amount of damage in a pinch, like when someone needs to be focus targeted Vadasi is is Vadasi's so insanely good let's see Vodin uh I mean Vodin's gonna stick in a tier I think I might put him here yeah yeah this is about or about the same where I put him last time um Vodin's just good like <laughs> A Vodin will survive forever because he's super fast, speedy. Um, a good Vodin will hit almost every single shot, and he's doing so much damage. The poison's always super good. Um, the jump pad access is, you know, super good. I he's he's a good Vodin. Definitely deserves to be like right here. And the, there are few and far in between, unfortunately. But like a good Vodin will absolutely shine in your games. Woo. Mm, Woo has been kind of butchered, guys, but I still think that he, I still think that he does super well, um, in the role that he needs to do. And even, even with the flexibility of kind of being this more disruption, like secondary frontliner slash off tank kind of character, where it's all about like just going in and causing as much chaos as you can and then getting out, you know, um, he still does super well with that. But I don't think that he's actually like, no, because he still has tongue. Like in the, at the end of the day, he still has the tongue because the the change to the tongue talent that makes it a daze now. Um, no one's really picking that anymore because it kind of just it, it's not good. It's very unfortunate because it was definitely like one of the best talents in the game, arguably. Um, but even without it, I still think that he can do super well. But I'm gonna put him about. I'm gonna put him about here. I think he can still do super, super well, and, he, and it's very easy to slot him onto a team. I might actually move Beckett down. I'm gonna move Beckett to here. I think. Yeah, that seems about right. Zenobia. Um, man, even with the buff, even with the buff, like the nice little interrupt to Zenobia's uh, Q, it's a nice quality of life change that definitely can make her perform super well but I, I still think she's right here um this is exactly where i put her on the other video the top of c um zenobi is just so easy to to jump on and and kill especially kajir <laughs> um but she you know she's got insane debuffs she's a pub stomper like i've seen zenobia's carry super hard in games because everyone's like super afraid of her and she she lives forever because no one really focuses her in those in those solo queue, duo queue environments. Um, but competitively speaking, Zenobia is really just not super great. Um, I don't think that she, I, I don't, I don't think that she's going to find a place on a team anytime soon, uh, which is sad, but it's true. Um, and then finally, Zandora, man, the buffs, the buffs is Zandora really did something else. I don't think that Zendora is actually the worst character in the game anymore. Um, do I think does I do? Do I think Zendora deserves to be out of D tier, though? That is the question. And the answer is yes. I think I'm going to put Zendora here. I don't think that she's a troll. Like, I don't think that she's a troll pick anymore. Um I do think that she's still incredibly difficult to slot correctly into a team composition because she she's not bringing anything like crazy to the table. Um, but the the increased aura size, increased aura duration, the increased focus gain, like she's she still has one of the best focuses in the game for keeping everyone alive because 600 shielding just all of a sudden for the whole team is nuts. And that's that's tier one. Um, but. I, I still think that she's just she's never going to be the tank role that you want her to be. She's never going to be the um, she's never going to be the main healer uh, 
full support character that you want her to be. Like she needs to have other people, and but if if you're picking her and then you're also needing to still pick like Sven and then Rucker, like this is these are three th these are three spots on the team composition, and I I don't think that uh I I don't think that's the you know it it can work. Like it, it, it can work, but I think it's really easy to shut down. Um, but again, because of the buffs, I don't actually think that she's a troll pick anymore. I don't think that she's the worst character in the game. Um, that is going to belong to Ezrin. So I've decided all of this. Um, who is going to be my goat? I don't want to pick Kajir because he's buggy. And I, I don't want to have bugs like be the deciding factor. But I do think that he's really strong, like definitely in contention. It might be Rucker, guys. I put Rucker like like low A tier last time, and I think he might be my goat. I think Rucker might arguably be the best character in the game right now. Like he's just so insanely oppressive at all stages. Um, he's oppressive immediately at level one, and like all the like most of his upgrades are super good. He has no fall off whatsoever at any point in the game. And he just does a ton of damage. He lives forever. He's good in every single team composition. Like he's easily supported by Ashlyn and he's easily supported by Sven. Like he can dive after people with assassins. He can protect the back line. Like, yeah, Rucker, Rucker is going to be my goat um, after after one weeks of, of game watching. And, and there might be another patch in the near future. We don't know. Like if they and if if the new studio ends up doing like patches for the game, consistently i'd be surprised but at the same time like they're they're already like re-releasing and fixing things so maybe we'll be caught off guard um but yeah marker is gonna be my goat who do i want to adjust if anything at all um ashlyn i think ashlyn is borderline s i think i'm gonna i think i am gonna keep ashlyn at the top like she's really super good all, all the supports are super good in the game um, Kajir, I'll move down a little bit just because it's mostly bugs that keep him up here. But I still think that he, I still think that he's uh doing solid. Um, and then I'll put Trip right there. Let's see. How about the rest of A tier? Do I want to move anything? No, this feels pretty good. B tier. Eh, these two are interchangeable. But just for just because people are going to get mad at me if I put if I put HK that low, people get mad. So I'm going to put a, a Oru down below. Um, and then these are about the same. These are the yeah, this this feels pretty good to me. So, yeah, this is my final tier list for the how how each character feels in the clash mode in a competitive sense after one week of exposure to the game relaunch. So. Again, this is all my opinion. If you disagree, you are more than welcome to um, make sure, you know, to and and let's let's spark up some discussions between, you know, comments in myself and, and comments with each other. Like, absolutely, please tell me if you agree or disagree and like what you've seen, because I'm super curious. I don't have eyes everywhere. This is this is all, you know, just my experience. And, you know, I I. I have a lot of knowledge of the game and I, I've seen it, you know, through its various phases when it was still alive and through private servers and now into today. So I, I feel like I have a pretty sensible judge <laughs> of these things. But, uh, you know, if you know something that I don't, by all means, please tell me. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good day. I will see you guys in the next one.